they're often used in train stations or airports to kind of document or give kind of scheduling times for your flight arrival or train station arrival. And instead what Shilpa has done here is kind of reprogrammed them with her own poetry and prose. But this is the first time she's ever done a diptych of two flatboards in together. And what you see behind me are these two flatboards in conversation with one another. It's this amazing sound installation, incredibly experiential, where you'll see a hundred microphones suspended above a hundred iron spikes, and on, on each spike is a piece of paper or a fragment of poetry by a writer or poet who has been incarcerated for their words, writings or beliefs. And what she's doing here is kind of creating this alternative transnational history of protest and resistance against states. What she's doing is crossing the creative fields of poetry with art. So she's looking at incarceration of poets for the words they've spoken, which is something we take for granted, that we can say whatever we want and we won't end up in prison. But this is looking at parts of the world where that does happen. And it shows us the sort of power of poetry in that it can lead to people being incarcerated and why it's so important. And it is shocking that it still happens and it's something we may take for granted in certain Western democracies, but it is a real risk for someone to put out their creative form and that they could end up being incarcerated for it. The work that really struck me is one of the smallest works in the show. So it's like a stack of pencil leads as a sort of statue. So it's almost like a monument to writers and their art form. And it's so tiny when you compare it to say, a massive statue that is a monument, say Statue of Liberty. And yet it's so powerful because it is that tiny pencil lead can have such a huge impact on people, societies and governments around them. 